10 Things You Didn't Know About Jimmy Choo. Welcome to LuxPy. We talk about fashion, luxury, and basically all the best things life has to offer. Welcome to our video listing the 10 things you didn't know about Jimmy Choo. Jimmy Choo is a British high fashion house specializing in luxury shoes, handbags, accessories, and fragrances. Their products have an empowered sense of glamour and a playful, daring spirit. The sexy cut, fashionable design, and exceptional Italian craftsmanship makes for some of the most desirable shoes in the world. Who of us doesn't dream of owning a few pairs of Jimmy Choo's? And if you want to know more about the history of the brand that designs the heels of my dreams, you have come to the right place. At the end of the video, we have a bonus fact about Jimmy Choo stores that may surprise you. So without further ado, here are the 10 things you didn't know about Jimmy Choo. If you are new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow us on Instagram, at Luxficom. Number 10. Jimmy Choo learned shoemaking from his father. Jimmy Choo Young Keith was born in 1948 in Penang, Malaysia. The son of a shoe cobbler, Chu was immersed in the world of shoemaking from an early age. His father wanted him to follow his footsteps, and by age 11, Chu had made his first pair of shoes. When I first started, my father wouldn't let me make a shoe, recalled the designer. Instead, he said, sit and watch, sit and watch. For months and months, I did that. After learning from his father about the craft of shoemaking, Chu made his way to England in the early 1980s to study at the Cordwainers Technical College in Hackney, where he graduated with honors in 1983. Number 9. In 1983, he started a shoe label called Lucky Shoes. Just after graduation, Chu started selling his designs under the name Lucky Shoes. The label didn't get great recognition, but cemented the path to the opening of his next label that would go on to become one of the greatest shoe brands out there. Number 8. Jimmy Choo opened a shop in 1986 In 1986, Jimmy Choo opened a shop in Hackney, London, where he created made-to-order shoes. It didn't take long for Chu's reputation to build. Within two years of opening his shop, Chu's shoes were featured in an eight-page spread in Vogue magazine. The label became a favorite of royalty and celebrities. The shoes were handmade by Chu and were one of a kind, which added to the desirability of the brand. Number 7. Jimmy Chu was a favorite of Princess Diana. Princess Diana was one of the first celebrities to showcase Jimmy Choo's, and this way she helped him reach a wider audience. Chu said about the princess, Whenever she traveled to different parts of the world, she would call me and say, Oh Jimmy, can you design a range for me? I'm traveling to Japan, India. Or, my birthday is coming up, can you design something for me? And this way his popularity grew, and having a mate warrior Jimmy Choo became the dream of many women in the UK. Number 6. Jimmy Choo was officially founded in 1996. Despite the rise of his popularity, Choo was still a small operation, producing just 20 handmade pairs of shoes per week. But Tamara Yurdai Mellon, an accessories editor at Vogue, who often hired Choo to make shoes for fashion shoots, sensed a larger market for Choo's creations. She approached the shoemaker about partnering to create a line of ready-to-wear footwear. With a £150,000 loan, they finally launched Jimmy Choo Limited. Together, Choo and Mellon quickly grew the business, keeping the focus on creating high-end footwear, but no longer relying on the idea that every single pair had to be made by Choo himself. They partnered with Italian factories and opened their first boutique shop in London. If you are enjoying this video so far, please subscribe to my channel. And if you are already subscribed, please click the bell button, so you can get a notification every time I post a new video. Number 5. Sandra Choi became creative director in 1996 In the 1990s, Sandra Choi, Jimmy Choo's niece, relocated from Hong Kong, China, to London, where she began working with her uncle. Passionate about turning her apprenticeship into a career as a designer, Choi attended the prestigious Central St. Martin School, where she studied for a degree in fashion design, whilst continuing work as Chu's protege. 
enchanted by the business, Choi eventually abandoned her studies so that she could devote herself full-time to design and the management of the atelier. In 1996, the Jimmy Choo brand was born, with Sandra Choi serving as the company's creative director, a role she still has this day. Number 4. Jimmy Choo used red carpets as runways With a strategy to expand internationally, the company established a retail presence in the United States, with its first store in New York City in 1998, followed by Los Angeles in 1999. Using the LA store to cater to Hollywood, Choi worked with celebrities and their stylists to create Jimmy Choo's shoes for award show dressing. The red carpet proved to be the ideal runway for shoes and handbags, as actresses such as Halle Berry, Sandra Bullock, Kate Blanket, and Natalie Portman all took their paces wearing Jimmy Choo. An important moment for the brand was when, in Sex and the City, Carrie Bradshaw had her Cinderella moment while running for the Staten Island Ferry and exclaimed, I lost my shoe. Number 3. Jimmy Choo left the brand in 2001 By the turn of the century, the Choo name was a global brand, with high-end retail clients that included Harrods and Saks. The Choo brand had also expanded to handbags and other accessories. But in the background, all was not well. Choo and Mellon were at odds about the direction of the company. Choo didn't think bigger was better. He questioned the quality of the shoes the company was making, and seemed to long for the days when he was back at his shop in Hackney making a small number of shoes for specific clients. So in 2001, Chu sold his half of the company to Equinox Luxury Holdings for $30 million. Number 2. Chu opened Jimmy Chu Couture Today, Chu has returned to his roots at a small shop he opened in London, which serves as the headquarters for the exclusive Jimmy Choo Couture line. It is there that Chu crafts a small number of pairs of shoes each week and trains a select group of students on how to make high-end footwear. His clientele includes Madonna and Michelle Obama. He said he's happy with the way things are, because it allows him to focus on quality and on creating a legacy he believes matters. Chu said, I have no worries about finance, but what I want to do for the rest of my life is that I want to give back to students. Number 1. The company Jimmy Choo was sold multiple times In its 26 years of history, the company was sold multiple times to different buyers. In 2001, Chu sold his 50% of the company to Equinox Holdings, a private equity firm, for $30 million. Mellon and co-creative director Sandra Choi, Chu's niece, stayed in the company. In 2004, a year after launching a handbag line, Jimmy Choo, which at this point had 23 stores, is sold to another pea shop, Lion Capital, for about $190 million. Then, in 2007, a 60% stake in Jimmy Choo, now with 60 stores, is sold to management firm Tower Brook Capital, for about $430 million. In 2011, having expanded into perfume and eyewear, Jimmy Choo is sold again to the German luxury goods firm Label Lux for $850 million. In July 2017, Jimmy Choo is acquired by Michael Kors for $1.2 billion. Now, Jimmy Choo is part of the Capri Holdings Limited Global Fashion Luxury Group, publicly listed in the New York Stock Exchange. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Comment below which brands you would like to know more about. And for sticking with us this far, here is some bonus information. Jimmy Choo stores design follow Feng Shui. Jimmy Choo is a personal believer in Feng Shui, and several of the brand stores follow its principles. In fact, Chu had a Feng Shui master from Malaysia flown in to assess his store near Harvey Nichols in London. There are a few examples of the use of Feng Shui in Jimmy Choo stores. The cash register is faced away from the door, so that the money does not walk out. The front door of the store does not face the back door, and they use curved lines, which allows energy to flow into the store smoothly. Thank you for spending some time with us, and make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. In return, I'll provide you with the best content about fashion, travel, and luxury living. See you soon!